All right, today we're gonna to learn about just the basic properties of graphing and evaluating uh, mathematical expressions. So, so the first part, let's talk about, quick about what a graph is. So mathematically, a graph is a way for us to visually represent the relationship between two variables. And normally what we talk about are the relationship between what's called inputs and outputs. Okay, the inputs and the outputs, this kind of relates to what are called functions, where the inputs represent all of our x values and the outputs represent y, all of our y values. So it'd be kind of like a quarter machine, um, or a coin machine, if you will, that if I were to plug in $1, that out of that quarter machine, I would get four quarters. Or if I were to plug in $2, I would get eight quarters and so on. So you have an input versus an output. And what the graph is going to do is it's going to represent visually the relationship between uh, those inputs and the outputs. To represent that on a graph, we have what are called what's called the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane consists of both the x and y axis. The x axis is the horizontal line that runs across the middle of the graph. And that's going to represent all of the inputs and all the p potential or possible inputs. Whereas the vertical or up and down axis is the y-axis, and that's going to represent all of the outputs. And from this, we can see all of the possibilities. And then in total, we're able to see an overall relationship between the two that we can then use to make some estimations on what would happen in the future. Now, <clears throat> to plot things onto this graph, every time I have an input paired with an output, they create what's called an order pair. So an ordered pair would be a given value of y for that given or for that value of x. So for example, if I have my coin machine analogy, if my input was one dollar, my output was four quarters. That would create an ordered pair of one four. Same thing if I had two dollars gives me eight quarters, I would have an ordered pair of two eight. And then on my graph, I would be able to plot these as points where my x value for this first one, let's say I plot this one in red, okay, where my x value is one, my input is one, my output is four, I'm gonna try and find the location where my input is one and my output is four, so I would plot that on my graph right here. Same thing for two eight, I would find my value for two and my value for eight, which I cannot plot on this graph. All right, so in this example, what I want you to do is just practice on plotting these ordered pairs as points on the coordinate plane. So you have A, B, C, and D. We're going to plot those as points. So I'm going to start off first with A. A is a value of 2, 4, which means that my X value is going to be 2. My Y value is going to be 4. That means on my X axis, I'm going to find the value for 2. And on the Y axis, I'm going to find the value for 4. And where those two things meet are where I would plot my point, and I'll label that A. So. First thing I guess to mention is that when my A value is positive, notice that I am moving, starting from zero, that I'm going to the right on my graph. So I'm gonna go right two values, and then when I have positive four, I'm gonna go up four units there, and that's gonna tell me where my point is. So now in B, for point B, I have a point of negative five, four, which means my X value is negative five, my Y value is four. So negative 5 and 4 on my graph, well, for the x value negative 5, that's not to the right, but that's going to be found to the left. So the y-axis is essentially going to cut my x-axis into the positive numbers and the negative numbers. So that means here I would go left 5, and then again I'm going up 4 to that next spot. So anytime I see negative values, I know that I'm going to have to go either left or potentially down if it's shown in the Y. And again, that's gonna be my point B. So what I'd like for you to do right now, I did A and B. What I would like for you guys to do is I want you to try example C for a point of six, negative three, and I want you to try D for a point of negative three, negative six. So pause the video and plot those two points. Go ahead, try it now. All right, so C should be at 6, negative 3, which means I'm going to go right from 0, right 6, and down 3. And for D, negative 3, negative 6 means I'm going left 3 and down 6. Okay, so think about the positive and the negative is going to tell us the direction on the graph that we're going. 
All right, next thing we're going to talk about is a mathematical expression. So this is going to get into the whole graphing idea and how we generate points. Uh, so mathematical expression is going to be any combination of numbers, variables, and operations in a meaningful way. So what I have here, um, this is actually what's called an equation. I bring this up because sometimes students mix up the idea of an expression versus an equation. So anytime you're going to see an equal sign, this overall thing that I have here, this overall chunk, this is what's called an equation. But an expression is just simply a part of an equation. So on either side of this equal sign, here I have 5x minus 8. This is what's called a mathematical expression. I have numbers, 5 and 8. I have a variable, x. And I have operations such as minus. Okay. Put together in a meaningful way, I have an expression. Within each expression, I have what are called terms. So 5x would be a term, 8 would be a term, and 17 would be a term. And terms are always separated by those operations, such as minus or such as equal. So what we're going to talk about is how to evaluate an expression. And this is part, again, of going into the idea of functions and graphing. So let's say I give you an expression of 3x minus 8. Again, a combination of numbers, variables, and operations. And I want to know what would this expression give me if my x value is 4. So here's what we're going to think about. Anytime I give you an x value with an expression like this, think of this idea or this x value as the input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that value of 4 and I'm going to plug it into my equation where I see x. So that means I'm going to write 3 and then 4 minus 8. Now the thing about this is that when I plug 4 in for x, what am I doing with the 3 and the x to start? So again, like I said, all expressions are combinations of numbers, variables, and operations. So there are sometimes some hidden operations. What I mean by that is this minus 8 is pretty obvious. We know that we're subtracting there. But there is technically an operation between 3 and x that's not really shown. Anytime I write a number next to a variable, what that means mathematically is that I'm multiplying those two things. So I'm not just going to write 3, 4, which really technically is 34. What I'm going to do is multiply those. Now to show multiplication, you have different ways. You can show the x between them, which I don't like to use because it looks like a variable. I can use a dot between them. Or the way I like to use when I input my values is parentheses. So I'm going to throw parentheses around that 4. And then to simplify an expression, what I'm going to follow is what's called the order of operations. P-E-M-D-A-S. Whoopsie daisies, not A-A, but A-S. What this means is that in order to evaluate first, I'm going to look to simplify any parentheses. P stands for parentheses. I'm then going to look to simplify any exponents. I'm then going to look to simplify multiplication or division, which hold the same weight. And I'm going to look then at the end to simplify adding and subtracting. Why this is important is because notice here I have 3 times 4 minus 8. So what do I do first? Do I multiply 3 and 4 or do I subtract 8? So based on this, because I have multiplication, which is here, and subtraction, which is here, because multiplication is higher up on the list, I'm going to do that first. And then I would do the subtraction second. So to simplify, I'm going to start with 3 times 4. So that would be 12. Because I haven't touched the minus 8, I'm going to carry that down. So I'm just going to rewrite minus 8. Because I haven't touched it, it stays the same. Now what I'm going to do is subtract. 12 minus 8 would give me 4. And now what I've done is I've evaluated my expression, given that input of 4, to get my output of 4. Okay, And that's the idea here, that when I get an input, it's going to give me an output. All right, I want you guys to try the next example in blue on your own. So I have negative 2x plus 5, where x is negative 2. Again, x equals negative 2. That would be my input. And what I want to do is plug that into my expression, simplify down, and see what I would get for my output. So pause the video, give this one a shot. All right, by plugging in negative 2 where x is, it's going to look very similar to the first example. I have negative 2. And then in parentheses, I put the negative 2 there. Now, notice I have a negative 2 in front. And then I'm plugging in a negative 2. So I have two negative 2s next to each other. 
and then plus 5. And again, what that means when I have a number next to a variable is that I'm multiplying. So negative 2 times negative 2 would give me positive 4. Add 5 should give you 9. And again, this again would tell me then my input and output and how this relates to graphs is that once I know these values, I know my input is negative 2, my output is 9, and given a coordinate plane, I could plot this point and generate a graph. All right, so again, we focus on the idea of plotting points on a coordinate plane as well as evaluating expressions. Got any questions, write those down. Otherwise, we'll see you in class. Peace out.